Neurology quiz number 64. What are the benign occipital epilepsies of childhood? The benign occipital epilepsies of childhood are two discrete electroclinical syndromes known as Paniopoulos syndrome or early benign occipital epilepsy and Gastro syndrome or late benign occipital epilepsy. In the ILAE classification, they are designated as self-limited occipital epilepsies of childhood. Number one, Paniopoulos syndrome. This accounts for one to two percent of pediatric focal epilepsy cases with peak age of onset from three to six years, although it can range from one to 14 years. It is slightly commoner in girls and it affects neurologically normal children. Seizures may be focal aware or focal impaired awareness usually occur during sleep and have prominent autonomic symptoms. These include nausea, retching, vomiting, pallor, flushing, midriasis or meiosis, and temperature changes. Lateral deviation of the head and eyes may occur late in the seizure, and evolution to unilateral or bilateral tonic-clonic seizures can be seen. Seizures can be prolonged and can last for more than 30 minutes in 40% of the patients. Up to 30% of patients develop focal or autonomic status epilepticus. Differential diagnosis includes psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, migraine, vertigo, and parasomnias. Affected children have cognitive function in the normal range, and cognitive and social outcome is excellent. EEG, interictal EEG shows high amplitude, frequent focal or multifocal spikes. These are most often in the occipital region, but they may also be seen in the central, temporal, and parietal region. These discharges increase in sleep and may show fixation of sensitivity. This is the appearance of epileptiform abnormalities with removal of visual fixation, often by eye closure. Ictal discharges are rarely recorded. However, rhythmic theta or delta activity with intermittent spikes that start posteriorly have been reported. This figure shows EEG of a patient with this condition with awake and spontaneous sleep EEG with sleep deprivation, showing spike and wave paroxysms predominating in the occipital regions. This EEG tracing demonstrates the phenomenon of fixation of sensitivity, continuous right occipital spiking when eyes are open and fixation is impeded by plus 10 translucent goggles on the left side of the figure. Spiking immediately disappears upon visual fixation. Inheritance is complex and genetic testing is usually not indicated in isolated cases without relevant family history. Treatment seizure frequency is low and up to one third of patients have only a single seizure. Patients with this condition usually have spontaneous remission by adolescents. A reasonable approach is to reserve treatment at the time of diagnosis and prescribe anti-seizure medications only for those with frequent seizures. No particular agent has been shown to be superior and commonly used medications include carbamazepine, oxcarbazepine, and levetiracetam. Rescue treatment with benzodiazepine should be considered for children with prolonged events. Number two, Gastau syndrome. This has onset at a later age, most commonly seven to 10 years and can range from three to 16 years. Patients have focal aware seizures, but awareness can be impaired late in the seizure. The symptomatology mostly consists of visual hallucinations that last from one to three minutes. Typically, these are elementary visual phenomena such as colored circles, but up to 10% of patients can have complex hallucinations such as faces or figures. Ictal blindness that can last for a few minutes is also seen. Patients may complain of headache during or after the seizures. Children are often misdiagnosed as having migraine or psychiatric disease. Children are cognitively normal and there is no difference in IQ between patients and healthy controls. EEG, interictal EEG shows focal occipital spikes and spike in wave discharges as in Paniopoulos syndrome with fixation of sensitivity. 
treatment, seizures are usually sufficiently frequent to require administration of anti-seizure medications. Carbamazepine or valproate are often used. The available data indicates that the majority of patients have spontaneous resolution of seizures in two to four years. This EEG tracing demonstrates occipital parap paroxysms in a patient with gastro syndrome.